It's the Endo meeting on Wednesday, July 10th of 2024. Our topic of the day is Hermes and getting more use out of our excess tests. Um, so I'm not sure if I should start with this, but I came back from vacation and uh, caught up on some details. And I think we don't want Hermes tests to be this extensive. To be as extensive as the tests for uh, the for XS? Yeah, I think what we need for Hermes is a test that uh, runs a simple script under Hermes that utilizes lockdown and compartment with a basic test case where we return something from import hook. And that should suffice because we will know that we have all the basic functionality and most of all lockdown working. Uh, and then running the entire uh, test 262 or equivalent uh, in that setup or running multiple tests around features, I think we're more likely to put work into detecting what Hermes supports uh, than actually testing things we care about. So what I am proposing is that we mark the tests that we want to run under Hermes and just keep them inside of the structure of test 262 tests um, because those tests should have parity with um, with other variants of the shim. Um, and, and to be clear, um, for uh, Salah, you're, you've been looking at... Uh, uh, well, for, first, I, at some point, I want to give the floor over to you to show, show us what you've done so far. But um, the trajectory I'm on for excess testing is to take what's in the in my excess uh, excess native parity branch, um, which is currently in a separate package for excess tests, and then reframe all of those tests much more closely to what is in test two six two uh, in the test two six two runner, and then just use the test two six two runner on Hermes excess and and node. Uh, with so, different cross sections of the tests that are available in there, I have no intention of, in the near term anyway, of running the entire test two six two suite in CI against every change to set. Um, so but the I, one clarification. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Just, just uh, could could you recap uh, what you said? Like you're saying, access uh, test is basically going away. It's a temporary gap, kind of. Uh, yeah, I'm gradually working my way toward making it. Um, the we're working with Modable, and Modable runs against Test Two Six Two, and we're also eventually going to need to prevent to, pro to propose a suite of Test Two Six Two tests for specification perfect. for all of the features of hardened JavaScript. Um, right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm working in the direction of trying to make it so that the tests will run and cover all of the cases that we need to cover for parity um, and try to frame them as closely as possible as po the to what would go to test 262. That will not be, uh, mo a lot of the tests will not be submiss submittable to upstream test 262, but I need to run them anyway. <laughs> like I need to do integration tests with import bundle under XS versus under node with different bootstrap environments. And I need to involve this. I need to involve the compartment mapper. So I need, I need to use the bundler that was alluded to before this meeting, the one that we use for generating CESS's distribution files. I need to use that bundler, uh, that roll up like bundler in order to generate bootstrap environments for node XS soon Hermes that are variations on the implementation of CESS. Um, and those are basically generated 262 tests. They will have to be generated 262 tests with generated preludes, for, uh, generated engine specific preludes. Um, and yeah, I think that that's the way that I get from what's in the excess test directory of my branch to something that I can submit in a pull request. Um, yeah. 
Great. Thank so you. I'll follow up later, but ZB, I'm sorry I interrupted. Uh, please go ahead. Um, I just need some clarifications to this. Uh, so the test 262, um, as it is right now, or as you're planning to run it, it runs lockdown and it runs the tests inside of a compartment. Is that correct? No. Um, Modable is working uh, on the side to annotate the suite of test 262 tests of the, the like the official test 262 tests with which ones are expected to run under lockdown and which ones are expected to run and to pass under lockdown and to pass under lockdown inside of a compartment and then fiddling with their test runner to to run those scenarios but as you will notice test 262 tests have a yaml based front matter that includes uh flags essentially about what cases those tests are supposed to be able to work under what environments they're able to run run under so we're planning to add more tags and use those tags as filters for the test runner to run the tests under different uh under different configurations modable is also going through the official test 262 suite and just landed their first change to it that makes it so a great number of the existing tests that should pass under lockdown do um because they're testing feature uh, but the test fixtures fixtures were written in terms of um having a working date constructor even though the test wasn't for the date constructor so they they've they've made some adjustments so that um so that those tests pass under lockdown um okay. um still is the final result from running this under Hermes going to cover a potential regression in a lockdown implementation that would introduce a async generator back and cause lockdown to not work under Hermes? Oh. Because that's what we care about first place. So a test that says, a change to permits or a change to lockdown implementation makes it no longer work under Hermes. This is the regression we want to prevent. Uh, and anything else is a nice to have at this point. Yeah. Maybe more important later, but for now we want to prevent regressions in stuff that uh, Leo was able to get to work under Hermes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want, Oh, I see. Because you're you are not confident of, of of broad compatibility, and you want to work your way up. We're in the same position with XS. I'm mm -hmm. gradually increasing the scope of the suite as I'm able to get more and more of it working under XS. Yeah, it's yeah. It's um, the same story. Hermes is not interested in broad compatibility, to be honest. No, uh, no. Could I uh, could I jump in and just give a yep. contrast here? So the way uh, the way uh, XNAP wasn't um, the way I envisioned how we really bootstrap it is actually we start off um, in the main round we create a compartment that is you know really acting as if it's the realm now um, and uh, this way we can have um, the hooks to import um, you know resolve and load um working and so so th this is the contrast that i'm you know adding uh, you know compared to how it is in xst where you're passing bundles to the command line i would sincerely like to start off unbundled uh, in a compartment with its hooks getting uh resolving the modules where they're found um uh, that's that's the you know very very optimistic uh, path that I you know um, want to aim for. Maybe we don't get there. Maybe we need some sort of bundling. Um, um, but yeah, this is really where I want to start the testing because um, um, I guess um, compartment mapper is an additional layer. Uh, um, that that you know is in between what's going on and um for um basic testing within the compartment inside access um i would like to 
utilize its own um, you know, hooks to be able to get to the modules where they are um, directly. So I, we're, we're in, yeah, we are working again in very similar spaces at the moment. Um, it's also the case that we are not interested in tests that test the excess host import behavior. The excess host import behavior for one under WebAssembly is going to be totally, well, I believe that it will be useless. Um, the host behavior at the, from the XST command line uses a bespoke XS like Unix path file, file name resolution for its import hooks, which is also not worth testing. So any of the tests of behavior between parent and child compartments, I am creating a, the, I am creating a compartment to serve as the parent for so the, the virtualized, um, or rather the nested compartment within that one. Um, which I'm sure you saw some examples of in the excess test directory. I think that there, to be clear, I think that there are going to be more tests are good. <laughs> Having more tests to cover and then like gradually adding the, this should work in Hermes flag to the test 262 front matter as, as you increase the amount of things that you're concerned about regressing is I think a great way to go forward. Of course, um, anywhere is a good place to start, really, as long as we're testing what we think shouldn't regress by whatever mechanism. Already, one more comment about Hermes. Uh, as far as I remember, Hermes doesn't have host import behavior. Uh, you have to bundle the entire code you want to run and pass yeah, it into Hermes. Excess is the same. Excess is the same in this regard, yeah. Um, so, so on on that note, um, I do have um, a couple of things that I wanted to raise. So, you have a script slash node dot js and script slash xst dot js. Um, I was trying without without having enough um, you know experience with compartment mapper uh, to imagine a, a node dash bundles dot js as a script which would do the bundling that would run under node as opposed to access T. Um, and I, I wasn't sure what to change exactly. So I, I, if I can share my screen quickly and just um, give it a more uh, visual, um, uh, do you guys see my screen or? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, so I'm just hiding the annoying controls. Okay, so uh, yeah, so of course I don't know if tags node node does anything. I, you know, um, it was access, and I just, it, you know, tried. But when I went this path, of course, I hit the part where um, modules that are native node modules or built-ins um, are basically just uh, uh, breaking. So, but yeah, this is one route that would help provide contrast for debugging at least. Um, I don't know, Chris, if um, if there is a, you know, a, um, insights, I guess, on how to make a bundle that is, um, that does not break on node specifiers of uh, built-ins for node um, so that this file would actually um, run well, bugs as tests. Yeah, so what's happening here, the tags are um, are the conditions that will appear in a package JSON file. So if you take a look in, I assume you have my branch checked out. Yeah. Um, if you look in Cess, for example, under okay. its package JSON, it right. has these tags here. Yeah, exactly. So access is one of the tags, um, and node is a tag. Types and default are tags respected by other things. Default must be respected by everything. Um, but uh, everything, yeah, import is a tag. Require is a tag, indicating that you're using the common JS module loader. 
um, and and what the what the compartment mapper does through make bundle or import location or make archive or any of any of its APIs, yeah. it all goes through the same system to slurp up the uh, to slurp up the working set. Uh, that is to say, the entry and its transitive dependencies um, out to, out until the explicit exits, and and it uses the tags to to select which implementation you're going to use. And if you do, um, if you have the node tag, then um, there's a greater de degree of probability that you're going to end up in training. You're going to exit to node implementation modules that you'll that you will entrain a transitive dependency that does import TTY, for example. Import TTY uh, is specifically entrained by debug, which is an NPM package. Um, and debug is entrained by Babel and, uh, uh, I ran into this too. I don't recall whether I made progress on a fix for it other than to just give the browser tag here. If you default is, in, is implicitly present, but if you have the browser tag, um, it will, it, it will try not to exit to node modules. Oh. And then you run into this error, which I also saw, and I have I haven't figured out the fix for. Okay, um, so, so yeah, so this is just pending some other um, um, work oh. elsewhere. Okay, so yeah, that one was that one bottomed out at a missing feature. That bottomed out at a missing feature. I don't remember where, but it seemed like God, I, I must have run into that a week ago, and then lost to the thread there's a oh yes it's um importing json in yeah that's right the missing feature is that the compartment that make bundle in compartment mapper does not yet support json um, oh. json modules and something in there somewhere is importing a a dot json module all right Oh. And I need, and all of this needs to be fixed for me to make progress on excess. <laughs> uh, the, the, this is, this is what happens when you entrain, when you entrain Babel, basically. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess I can stop sharing until I figure out the next question and maybe ZB, um, if you have something in mind. Does anybody want to take on the task of getting Make Bundle to support importing JSON modules? I looked into it. It's a little bit of a winding path. Um, if it doesn't make any progress till the end of the month, I'm willing to pick it up. But for now, I have a bunch of Webpack stuff to finish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because we um, want to... Uh, we want to uh, look for someone to audit it. Nice. Yeah. Um, I have one totally unrelated, uh, very fresh announcement. <laughs> um, remember uh, how we use uh, canonical names or paths or whatever you want to call them as keys in the policy? Yes. Uh, the same, uh, the same structure uh, is being used by Endo, uh, and we're looking into potentially doing a breaking change there, because it turns out that if you order uh, the items in the canonical name, uh, starting at the name of the package and then going uh, towards the root of the dependency tree instead of the other way around, the more significant part is at the front and therefore it sorts much better. And as a result, it diffs much better. Hmm. And I took an example a diff uh, in policy JSON after uh, some dependency updates in MetaMask uh, and the original policy diff uh, was uh, 1,500 
uh, changes, uh, 1500 lines changed. And by just taking the JSON file and processing it by reversing the order of items in uh, keys, uh, the same difference in policy after sorting it uh, the new way was uh, only 600 changes. And it was much easier to understand for a human. I so see. So we're thinking that maybe we will change that because uh, after initially being a bit skeptical about how far it can get us, it looks like it can get us really far. Like we might uh, be able to uh, get away with not being able to visualize uh, the diff of the policy uh, with a more specific tool for much longer with that tiny change, although it's a breaking change. Uh, luckily for Compartment Mapper, uh, the Compartment Map no longer has any of those uh, identifiers. So it's a change to the policy format and change to the expectations of the policy format. Uh, but not to the existing uh, built things, especially in the archive case. You're, so you, um, in the expression of a canonical path, you're using you're currently using um, left facing alligator brackets. Yeah, as the delimiter. And in this new term, I presume you're going to use right facing facing alligator brackets. Exactly. Um, exactly. Split by uh, one alligator bracket, reverse, join by the other one. That's the whole thing I did to get the diff uh, to be a third of the original diff. I see chips. Alligator brackets? Yes. Isn't it cute? What is it? <laughs> Angle brackets. Oh, the, okay. The, the mouth. I thought we were using like French quotation marks or something for something. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 uh, Guillemot, <laughs> no Guillemots. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> yeah, so In, this is very fresh. Vocabulary it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is very fresh, so I'm not promising uh, it's going to go one way or the other, uh, but it was a very interesting result, and I couldn't stop myself from sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I have no concerns. I think that I believe you. I believe you and I believe it'll be cool. I see Sala. Uh, yeah, I think I sorted enough thoughts in my mind, I think, uh, to try to ask a pointed question again. Uh, I'll lower my hand first, share my screen. Uh, and um, do you confirm that this is the result you get? on your end, Chris, um, that those errors are not like something I have weird on my end uh, when I run the XST um, tests. Um, so, um, so this is a node, everything is okay. This is an XST, the version I have at least, which is just I downloaded the binary from their releases um oh. i haven't seen this but it might be because you are you're downloading the binary you might have to build from uh, so modable has been responding to feedback um for bug fixes from me due to this exercise they have found okay they have found a number of bugs i have found a number of excess bugs in this process the and I believe all of them are fixed. I believe none of them impact our Agoric concerns, which in, I'm sure will interest Mark. All uh, right. But, so, yeah. so on, on that note, so you're saying um, Modable's um, branch, I check it out basically and build XST there. I have not done that before, but I, I've done enough with the repo that that's probably doable now yeah, it's only a little bit weird i would tell you right and right now that the the one thing that is likely to um to perplex you is that it is you need to set the all caps modable environment variable to the path to where you 
checked out your moddable. Um, and then, and then the make files should work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think it's part of their instructions to do that, uh, for excess, um, builds, uh, otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, my, my Nero atypicality makes me blind to instructions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm really sure the make files, honestly, so we don't need to keep looking for moddable, uh, because I mean, the make files are inside of moddable, so. <laughs> you know, um, all right, well, um, here is another tangent. Um, so the reason why I'm uh, more interested in loading things where they are is because uh, we've gladly recently uh, figured out a way to get um, errors to show the proper uh, file line um, and, you know, e even an excess WASM, um, which works to some extent, um, depending on, you know, the build parameters really. So it's, um, um, and, and so while we're testing, I, you know, when I get a, an error like this, I, I have like so much that I cannot really work this back to a source line that makes any sense, especially there's like a bundle in the middle. Um, and yeah, so I'm like, you know, um, this is a weakness of excess. Um, and it bothers me and it's problematic, etc. I find this is a case where you end up having to use excess bug, um, excesses bespoke stepping debugger. Right. Are, are are you using it on your end? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. should probably look into using it. Um, it. It will be a lot easier to use it with XST. It was near impossible to um, consider how it would wire with Wasm uh, because yes. of the times. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I I have no idea what the debug story would be for Wasm. Um. Yeah, with excess, without excess bug, you're mostly blind. All right, and um, so so you're just using their own modable zone excess bug um, from from the same repo, I think the modable repo. Yep. Yeah, if you build if you build XST, you'll end up with a, an excess bug as well. Okay, perfect. All right, well, yeah, that that clears uh, clears those questions. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that specific error I have not seen. Oh, right, right. But I answered that. It's probably because of an, a stale XST version. Um, which is to say that when, uh, to be clear, my expectation is for CI, for, for a regression tests for Hermes and XS, that there will be a CI job that builds moddable excess from, from sources and then runs XST with a specific version of XST. And then likewise for Hermes. Um, I, I, my, yeah, we've already, we've already, I, I, when I spoke to Leo about this, he pointed out, and it's been pointed out at previous endosyncs that, um, the binaries that Hermes provides in their GitHub releases are exceedingly stale. Um, will uh, it will be necessary to build, uh, a more recent Hermes from scratch in CI. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. It's my cue. Uh, again, uh, having familiarized myself with the situation, uh, I think our initial priority, at least in terms of Leo's work, uh, is to get any old Hermes uh, as a regression test for uh, that that will allow us to spot when uh, a change to uh, SAS lockdown was made that undoes. Uh, whatever Leo has to do uh, to get it to work. So updating Hermes to a newer version is detrimental to to that goal. Uh, nice. If we get the latest version, because uh, no one's really running the latest version uh, in uh, in any of the apps. 
what which version is run in the apps one of the ones that's that's published so here. there's a react native that is using uh hermes uh wh whatever they build into react native uh it's not uh it's not uh, up to date with the main uh react native is just picking a version and building it into itself uh and Meanwhile, Hermes team is mostly working on the new version of Hermes uh, that's uh, going to start releasing at some point, but it's not releasing yet. But when they release, there's likely going to be two versions of React Native, one with old Hermes and one with new Hermes for a while. Yeah, okay. Um... So we're going to have to figure out which ones we care about, and we're going to have to figure out how we want to limit scope because uh, we don't want to be testing capabilities of Hermes itself. We want to make sure that we do not regress uh, our basic Hermes support with a change to lockdown somewhere mm -hmm. uh, or any other uh, simple change that happens to use something that's going to explode under Hermes, like define yeah. a, a async generator function somewhere. So, so my expectation is that there will be a CI job with presumably a version matrix where the versions are salient to your usage. Yeah. So Sandra. for now, uh, I, I think step one uh, around Hermes, uh, which is going to be useful regardless of what end result we intend for, uh, is to take the, the version of Hermes that's not super new, but easy to install and get it to uh, become available in CI and run a basic test case with it. Uh, and that's going to be uh, the, the best Pareto principle result we can count on. Like we're going to get 80% of the results with 20% of the work. Clarifying questions, EB. Um, but by, uh, by, sorry, the, the version you're referring to here is it, are we talking um, one of the versions that are um, expected to be with the React Native builds? Um, uh or as, as far as I remember, the changes that we are introducing are going to be enough to work in the very old Hermes that's available uh, as NPM package. I might be wrong, but as far as I remember, uh, it might be the case that we will simply support all of the Hermes. And if we end up tripping up uh, the regression test, we can look into whether this is specific to the very old version of Hermes that runs in CI and we need to update it or uh, whether it breaks Hermes in general. But okay. that smoke test uh, kind is going to be a good first step. And then we can look into getting a Hermes version that's more difficult to obtain into CI. The Yeah, the, the reason I'm asking is um, I, I I looked at uh, using ES host and other uh, uh, JS uh, view or I can't remember the acronym um, uh, to get Hermes running. And what I was curious about is if there's a way to make sure we're getting the same version of React Native through that and maybe using that approach for uh, the CI, CI tests. Uh, because this way, at least you're, you know you're using the engine that will give you the same trouble as your um, as your uh, deployments, right? Yeah, yeah. We were discussing that too with uh, Leo. When was it? Yesterday? Yeah, I think so. Um, and if there's a simple way to get the entire React Native set up, uh, for example, maybe someone created a uh, container image that we could use for uh, a test run in GitHub Actions that simply has all of the React Native stuff installed and configured properly to work. We could use that and use a specific version or even rolling uh, version of React Native to run the test. Uh, and that would be, in my opinion, an increment uh, from getting the old uh, Hermes binary. 
I, I think that would be two increments, right? Because uh, the first increment is getting the Hermes that is part of the React Native build as opposed to the whole React Native um, um, as a, a container, right? Um, just mapping whatever uh, the React Native uh, version is, the Hermes used by that particular version of React Native um, and then just checking out that version of Hermes itself. Um, mm -hmm. worth, worth so I consider that uh, not an increment. I mean, I, I consider that the same. So if we can get Hermes in the version that's used by React Native, as opposed to getting React Native as a whole, uh, this is just more work to get Hermes, uh, but less overhead to get the image. Uh, but for our case, I don't think the rest of React Native matters. Perfect. Perfect. That, that clarifies. Yeah, thank you. I think that concludes the Hermes topics for now. Um, just one last bullet point. I don't know if it's relevant or not since the package is going away, but I have it on the outline. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, does renaming endo slash access tests to maybe endo slash parity tests. Oh, yes. So, so to be clear, I don't think that that package is going to survive. I think that I'm just going to move everything into test 262 runner, which is up here. That's um, all right. If, yeah. If you, there's an existing package that has a test 262 runner for integration tests, it's running very few of them. <laughs> um, and it's not running any of them in CI, but I think that's a better, I think that's where I'll, to be clear, I don't know what's going to happen as I when as my plans um, meet the, meet reality. Um, but uh, the objective is to the objective is to um, well for one. But yeah, the 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 objective is to get to the point where all of the tests that I have in excess native put them in the two six two structure as two six two tests with front matter, but to get there, um, I need to be able to get, um, I need to get, be able to get more code to run in a prelude or in a test 262 test than currently does, specifically um, importing JSON, importing JSON and the make bundle flow needs to work. All right. Um, yeah, and then I have to write some more infrastructure for taking a, for generating test two six two tests from, um, from tests that are laid out as node modules, that the compartment mapper will slurp up and turn into test two six two tests. Uh, yeah, because basically. Yeah, basically generate test two test two yeah. six two from node node layout modules. Which brings me to a question, a clarifying question for you, Dasala. You said um, you want to create an environment where um, a compartment has an import book that just gets the modules from where they are. The where they are is pretty ambiguous. Um, well. Do you mean yeah. where they are within the within the assumptions of a particular mm. import resolution semantics? No. So uh, I was looking a little bit closer at make bundle uh, bundle and uh, it pointed me to uh, compartment map from node modules. Uh, like basically figuring out where where the the whole graph resides. Um, before uh, before uh, bootstrapping the X snap wasm uh, would allow all resolutions uh, to take place uh, based on the same logic that is used to make the bundles. I um, see. So it's an, it's an interesting point. Um, the 
what I've resorted to doing is using um, using yeah, so there there are layers to this. So make bundle generates a compartment map and from the compartment map generates a single script. And the neat thing about a single script is that I can use it as a test 262 test, right? Since the test 262 tests are are, are, are not modules. Um, right. The, or, or need not be modules, I should say, depending on what's, what labels are in their front matter. The, um, and if they were modules, there would be no reasonable default import semantics. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother with that. The, um, make bundle generates a script that has the inline transforms of all of the modules to CES compatible form, um, and then links them. The, you started describing an approach where you have a script that constructs a compartment with import hooks. Right. Um, and then crosses the links. This has occurred to me as well before. The um, it, there is a like imagine a if we, we could copy paste make bundle, and this is we, we talked about a secure dash bundle dot js before. That may or may not be the same thing. Um, no, it's not. It's not. In any case, there is there is a bundle format we could contrive that's like make bundle, but relies upon the existence of a compartment of, of the re relies upon the existence of a native compartment. Yeah. And that that would be basically translating the compartment map into um zip format. No, not the zip format. You could translate the compartment map into a uh you could translate the compartment map and the assets it refers to instead, like just take the zip form, right? And then translate that into, and make bundle creates the zip form and then generates a script. Uh, you could do something that takes the zip form and translates it into a file that has every module as a string in a JSON blob, right? Um, the text of every module, the original sources of every module as a, a, as a string in a map of file. Like basically take the, um, you could basically take the, the the zip file contents and then build a JSON structure out of them. Um, and then, uh, like at least for the ones that are text, gosh, knows what you do about the ones that are binary. Um, the and then construct a compartment for every compartment in the, like manually construct a compartment for every compartment in the compartment map and wire up the, and then like roll out an import hook that uses that JSON structure as its data source. Uh, and then and imports the entry point at the bottom. And then you have something that's behaviorally identical to the product of make bundle, but relies on the native compartment for doing all of the linkage. There are, there are some virtues to that approach. Uh, so there, there's a little um, um, extrapolation here. Um, uh, so uh, for Wasm, uh, using Mscripten at least, we do get a free memfs, and we do get a opt-in nodefs. Um, and so the nodefs path that I took previously was basically uh, loading uh, directly from the this right um that works in node uh, of course doesn't work elsewhere uh, but the mammoth route is where i used a zip to uh, get all the um things that will be in the mammoth and and then i just directly um uh, resolve against the mammoth um so so if the make bundle uh, does not necessarily need to script everything. I'm, I'm going to have to look closer at the API. I haven't had a chance to. Um, um... Well, so if instead of scripting, if 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 we if you took that approach, the only real difference is that instead of having a JSON blob with the contents of the of the zip file, you would have we you would be you would consult the the memory file system for the same effect. Right. Um, there all of the matter after that where you 
translate the compartment map into a set of compartment constructors and then cross-link them, that that's identical. Um, the I'm uncomfortable with relying on the MMFS, though it is totally up to you guys about whether you take that approach. Um, the MMFS implies that you're going to create an excess binary, that you're going to create a, an excess WASM binary for every integration. Um, which has some profound differences in how you how you deploy that to npm, how you package it for for later consumption. The question is, are you are you going to publish a kit for constructing WASM binaries, or are you going to create a WASM binary that can be combined in different ways with different sets of bundles? Um, uh, no, no, no. So, so the way the way uh, MFS works is um, you instantiate the module. And then you get the API for the MAMFS, and then you use that to populate things. And then you can call the main after uh, after you put stuff. Uh, so you, you, oh, I see, I see. So there is, yeah, oh, okay. So right. you work with a single FS binary, a, a single XSnap WASM binary, right. and you just right. have an API that requires you to pre-populate its pre-populated oh. file system. You can populate live, basically. I, I pre-populate uh, in the case that you know those are fixtures, um, uh, but but yeah, you, I mean it's a um, it's a volatile um, um, FS that is uh, basically just replicated from a zip, so that there's a bit of a sanity on what is in there. Uh, if you're trying to imagine it, you can always look at the zip. Um, as opposed to using the API to interrogate it, right? Yeah. So the so you can make that work, but we wouldn't be able to share tools um, between that and Agoric, like the. Um, yeah, yeah. I th I think both both routes. Like I like the JSON route, but you you mentioned binaries, and I'm not sure which binaries would be in the JSON for XS. Um, maybe for node, uh, some binary. No, 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 no. We don't currently have any. Um, make bundle doesn't support binary mon modules. The compartment mapper does support importing with type bytes. Okay. The yeah. compartment mapper supports importing a module with type bytes effectively. Um, as for assets. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the MAMFS is a path of least resistance, so it's going to be easier to go that route. And so is the NodeFS. Uh, but but then again, it's just from where I am, it's the path of least resistance. Um, it's not necessarily the um, ultimate goal. Um, that, that remains um, to be seen, I guess. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks all. I'll see you next time. Throw a thing on the agenda. See you guys. Yep. I'm going to stop the recording and...